The city of Bam used to be one of the most popular destinations for tourists in Iran. Its ancient mud brick citadel and winding streets attracting those drawn to its wonders. The city, though amongst many in Iran, constantly under threat from earthquakes. Well then, at 5.30 a.m. on the 26th of December 2003, a blind fault previously invisible as the crack didn't rise all the way to the surface ruptured. The resulting quake measuring 6.6 .6 on the Richter scale. A second rupture followed just a few seconds later, only a few kilometres away. The result was catastrophic. The citadel itself and 70% of buildings in the region destroyed within seconds. The death toll, 26,000 people, most crushed as they slept. My whole family is dead. My brother, his five children, my daughter too. Everyone is gone. There are neither tents nor heating. Nothing. We've lost everything. What can we do? The current priorities are to find homes for the homeless, treat the wounded and take bodies from the rubble. A huge relief operation swung into action, with emergency centres set up to care for the injured, particularly as temperatures go far below zero at night. Well, since the quake, massive effort has been put into rebuilding parts of the city. Countries like Japan and France involved in reconstruction of the citadel itself. So how do the people of Bam and many in Iran live with the ongoing threat of further quakes? The UN saying Iran remains the worst-hit country in the world for quakes. Well, Mariam Pazadeh revisits BAM for France 24. Zara has bought water to wash the graves of her family every Thursday for 13 years. She always starts with those of her four children. The oldest was 18, the youngest two and a half years old. None survived. Each tombstone reads, carried away by the earthquake. Half of the graves here bear the same epitaph. Zara lost her entire family to the disaster. Her husband, parents, her brother and her nephews and nieces. She says that since 2003, her life has been haunted by the memory of those last moments. Suddenly, I felt the house shaking. I woke my husband up and told him to go and see what was happening, but we didn't have the time to do anything. The whole house caved in, including the room where we slept. We were stuck under the ruins until midday. No sound could pass from down below, but we could hear noises above us. My husband's nephews and cousins managed to make an opening to reach us. I told them to hold my daughter, Fatima, who was two and a half years old. When they took her from my arms, she had already suffocated. My other children were brought out of the ruins with the help of a bulldozer. Iranian authorities gave little information about the number of deaths from December 23, 2003. The earthquake is estimated to have killed between 20 and 40,000 people. One out of every three of the residents here had simply vanished. Meanwhile, international attention was turned on BAM. Even the United States put aside its differences with the Iranian government and contributed to the aid effort. France helped to kit out this hospital with new equipment. Those who work here today say they're on permanent standby for another earthquake. We acquired experience after the earthquake, not only in BAM, but across the whole of Iran. Crisis units have been set up. The BAM catastrophe was so devastating that afterwards we brought everything up to date. Now we know what to do. If something of this magnitude ever happens again, we will be ready, so the level of damage we saw in BAM won't happen again. Less visible scars often take longer to heal. According to the doctors here, 5% of the population could still be suffering a form of depression or trauma. The small mental health unit at the Pasteur Hospital sits discreetly at the end of a corridor. 
We have a lot of patients who are suffering from post-traumatic stress, but there are a lot fewer than during the first year after the earthquake. So we've seen this percentage diminish. They put flowers and painted murals and frescoes in the squares. That's had a positive impact on the morale of the inhabitants. BAM's fragile citadel can never be fully protected. Its caretaker, Afshin, was sleeping in his small clay hut on the day of the earthquake. The initial shock measured 6.3 on the Richter scale. He remembers that the rumbling started at 5.20 a.m. when he was fast asleep. My bed was here. I was lying down and I looked up at the ceiling. Suddenly it started shaking so much that I jumped for the door, but I didn't make it. I fell over and lay under the rubble for 10 hours without moving because there was so much debris on top of me. This is the place of my rebirth. My first birth was at the hospital, the second was here. This is where God gave me another chance to live. He gave me a reprieve so that I could be useful to society and to myself. Afshin decided to repay the favor by bringing life back to the citadel. This architectural wonder is registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is almost 3,000 years old, the most ancient adobe citadel in the world. Built from a mixture of straw and mud, it was almost completely destroyed in the earthquake. A team of 120 people has been working over the years to restore its former splendor. Our priority in the reconstruction work was the construction of a secure pathway that goes from the main gate to the top of the citadel, where visitors can walk without any risks. People will no longer be afraid of walking on the mud and straw structures. They can't be allowed to think that this place is dangerous anymore. If a building is built properly, it will be a lot more resistant to earthquakes. It won't collapse and the damage will be less devastating. City authorities promised that rebuilding efforts will conform to earthquake-resistant standards. Few were reassured and many residents preferred to leave. At every street corner of BAM lie abandoned houses like this former notary office. Or this house, built a month before the earthquake. Thousands of residents have now fled the ruined city. Hamid's family was among them. Straight after the December 2003 earthquake, his parents moved 180 kilometers away. This 27-year-old man returned to his hometown two years ago. Driving through these streets brings back the memories. My aunt's house was at the end of the street. We were halfway up the street. We often went to their place. They all died in the earthquake. My aunt, my uncle, and my two cousins. Most of my friends and those I grew up with are now dead. Three or four of my friends from school I used to go cycling with were killed. When I'm out in the street, I think of them. The only one still here is his grandmother, who never left the temporary shelter put up by rescuers 13 years ago. The 90-year-old says she feels safe in this small hut made from sheet metal. 
I had just finished my prayers. I was hailing the Prophet with the tasbih, and I had almost finished when I heard a great noise. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The water and the electricity were cut off. There were shouts. The noise came from the ground and the sky. It was the apocalypse. Rebuilding work on Hamid's home finished a few years ago. He now lives here alone. The only belonging he keeps from his old life is his Quran, which he found buried under the family home. He says returning has been difficult. Look around you. We haven't painted the walls because it reminds us too much of before. We don't even have the courage to put bulbs on these bare electric wires. For me, this house symbolizes the earthquake in Bam. It's not like we had a peaceful life here. Maybe we weren't as well equipped for it before, but we were a family. We were scattered after the earthquake. Now there's someone here, someone over there. Everyone lives their own lives. People who still live here can never forget the earthquake. The painful memories are never far from our minds.